Great to have you along for the ride. Thanks a lot for stopping by. Always glad to have back my friend, America's mayor, the guy we all trusted and relied on 20 years ago. It's Rudy Giuliani. Rudy, how are you? I'm good, Joe. It's great to be with you. It's always a pleasure. I like to ha- your hat. Oh, thank you. I, I wore that because I was going to be interviewing you. And, of course, I've got New York behind me, the, the view from the Statue of Liberty. I see that. And, and you got my the hat of my heroes there. Hey, exactly right. So uh, 20 years ago, we did rely on you. I, I want to get into 9-11 more as we get closer. Maybe we can talk next week in two weeks, oh, something absolutely. like that. Absolutely, anytime you want. But, but, but I want to ask you one thing about that morning. Do you remember anything before the attack? Do you remember getting up that morning, how nice a day it was in Lower Manhattan? Sure, sure. Do you remember I do. all that? I do. I, re- I remember uh, that it was a nice day, in particular because it rained very heavily the night before. And right. I had gone to a movie, and I had gone to a dinner for Pee Wee Reese and... and uh, and Jackie Robinson, for their wives, because we were going to raise money to build a statue for them. And then when I went to bed, it was storming. And uh, and the Yankees canceled the game that night, and <laughs> Clemens was pitching for his 20th win. You and I so, okay, can always remember Yankees moments, can't we? Yeah, Yankees I mean, fans do that. that. Of course. I re- and then I woke up the next morning expecting it to be raining. Yeah. It was primary day. And I look out, and it's a beautiful day. And I went to, I put off my usual uh, eight o'clock meeting until four in the afternoon because it was primary day. Yeah. And I didn't think there'd be much doing until everybody started complaining at four o'clock in the afternoon, which they always do. Right. And I had breakfast with an old friend, Bill Simon, who was considering running for governor of California. Right. And my counsel and just about my longest friend, Denny Young. And we were discussing the viability of him running for governor of California. And uh, all of a sudden, Patty Verone, one of my detectives who was guarding me, came in and told us that a twin engine plane had hit the North Tower. And then it, then the day changed into the worst day of my life. Yeah, we were told it was a twin engine plane. And I, I was a TV news anchor in Lansing, Michigan. My wife woke me up and said, hey, a plane hit the towers. And we'd just been there two or three years earlier. And we looked at the majesty of the twin towers. And I thought, man, a guy must have been drunk. You know, a pilot might have yeah, had yeah, a heart sure. attack. You didn't know it first. There's no way you think it's an attack. There's no way that you would think that. I, I want to get in, in in earnest into all of that as we talk in a couple of weeks, right before the, the anniversary, sure, if you don't I, mind. I, I'd but, be honored to but, do that. But thank you. Let's fast forward to where we are today. You found out very quickly it was Osama bin Laden. We knew that it was Al-Qaeda. We should have known about Al-Qaeda because of the USS Cole and the Kenya thing. Uh, Al-Qaeda had been doing bad things around the globe to good people for a long time. And we, we soon thereafter found out that Afghanistan and the Taliban had trained Al-Qaeda and given them safe harbor and safe haven. Rudy, fast forward to two or three days ago. Can you believe what's happening in Afghanistan? No, no, I can't believe it. I can't believe that this, whatever he is in the White House, actually used September 11 as the date on which he wants the Taliban back in charge of uh, of Afghanistan. Well, he got him back faster than he thought. But why would you want to put the Taliban, who helped to organize the, the destruction of uh, so many lives in America in the worst foreign attack we ever had, why would you want to put the Taliban back in charge? And, you know, they're, they're, right now they're raping women, kill. I mean, this whole stuff, it's, it's the new and better Taliban. It's totally absurd. They're, right. they're killing people as we speak. And we've got a bunch of Americans stranded there, Joe, because we don't have a president. America does not have a president. He, he R- Rudy, he, tel- he telegraphed room it. Once. He telegraphed it. He said we're going to leave by, what, August 31st or something. You know what the Taliban leader said just today or last night? I'll give you till 9-11 to get all your stuff and all your people out of here. This guy, the Taliban leader, is showing more strength than our president, and it makes me sick. Well, our president doesn't really exist as a president. There's no president in memory that during a crisis like this didn't immediately go into the situation room. Look, he's got a big breakdown in communication, the worst I've ever seen. It makes uh, September 11 look like uh, the coordination was perfect, and it surely wasn't. But... If he doesn't go into the situation room, he just makes it worse. Uh, Did somebody tell him that's why we built the situation room? That's what it's there for? It's there so the president can be in one place? I mean, remember all the stuff they did about Bush being absent for about three or four hours because they were trying to protect him because they didn't know what was happening? Right. This guy's been absent for five days. He hasn't been in the situation room once. He hasn't called one world leader except Boris Johnson yesterday 
And we didn't even know what he talked to him about. He should have been on the phone with world leaders from the beginning, doing what Bush did, lining them up immediately against our enemy. I mean, by the time we went into, by the time we went into Afghanistan, we had uh, all of our allies behind us. But every every one of them. Yeah, no, he hasn't called them because he read one speech that was written for him. You know this. He didn't take even one question. He turned around and walked away. Oh, Jen Psaki was on vacation. She decided, oh, okay, I guess I'll go back. It's Rudy Giuliani, by the way. Rudy's Common Sense.com. You've got to check out his podcast, his video cast, his vodcast. It's amazing. I watch it every day. Uh, Rudy's Common Sense.com. It's Rudy Giuliani, America's mayor. So here we are. We telegraphed that we're leaving. What you and I, I think, agree on is that President Trump, who I'll talk to tomorrow, President Trump made conditions, and he said, Taliban, here's how it's going to work. And if you don't do these things, we're not leaving. They didn't do any of the things, Rudy, and we still left. And then well, Biden blamed Obama Trump. Even Obama was the first one to set down a, leap, a date. It was supposed to be in 2016 that we were going to leave. And then he put it off, uh, ostensibly because it would lead to what we just saw. And, <coughs> excuse me. And Trump put it off twice for that reason. And he would have put it off again. Uh, the, the decision he made, and plus they would have executed us. Certainly Trump would have executed it differently. Right. The last people out would have been the military. Not the first people out. And you give up Bagram Air Force Base? Look, Bagram Air Force Base exists not just for Afghanistan. It's, our, it's one of our best assets against China and Russia. And we gave that up for what? We it, have to it, give it's, that up. That's not part of a war. Not only that, not only did we give it up, they have all the equipment now. They have all of our military, all of our artillery. Well, who are and, you trying to help? Well, I, I have no idea. And, and I think that, well, that I you do. and I would that you and I would agree that what they did, what Biden did, what he allowed happen, and this Joint Chiefs of Staff guy has to go. I mean, at the end of the day, he what they allowed to, to happen, the Taliban okay. said, Oh, look, they're leaving. Let's pretend we pushed them out. The Taliban now claims victory in the war in Afghanistan, Rudy. Well, I mean, uh, he certainly hasn't been on any place tell- saying it wasn't victory. Right. The guy is is hiding somewhere. I mean, I- I've never seen this before. Uh, John Kennedy, when we made a big mistake at Bay of Pigs, came out within five hours and admitted it. Ronald Reagan took two hours to come out to uh, take responsibility for the Marine Corps bombing. Even Jimmy Carter took about 12 hours to come out and take responsibility for the aborted mission to save our hostages. He comes out five days later with a stupid speech that he read, blaming everybody but him. And he's the only one who could make the decision. How, I mean, whatever Trump decided, what did it matter? He's the president. He looks at it and says, this is safe. This isn't safe. It's his decision. He can't even own that, which tell, and then he can't go into the, uh, into the uh, situation room and he hasn't appeared since then. So you know what people are saying all around the world. I got this from three people today in different parts of the world. Hey, how does it feel not to have a president? Wow. We don't have a president. And we don't have a leader of this crisis. I taught leadership. Here's the, here's the critical thing about leadership. you got to have a leader. you got to identify your incident commander. Who's in charge? Who does everybody go to? No wonder it's chaos. He didn't even put somebody else in charge. It's Rudy Giuliani, America's mayor, of course, saved uh, this country 20 years ago. And, and I rely on you as a, a trusted friend, and I appreciate that. Rudy's Common Sense.com is the website. You know, as we're watching this unfold, and as we're seeing the, the Taliban take control, killing people as they go, they're also killing the people that helped us. They're killing people that, that were translating for us oh. and helping to, to, to train the military. These people have no safe haven whatsoever. Rudy, why would anybody ever... Um, agreed to help us again. That's number one. And number two, it didn't take China and Russia too long to come in with a wink and a nod and, and say, hey, Taliban, we recognize you. It's got to raise the question of just how much does China own it? I mean, they spent somewhere between 30 and $40 million on the Biden crime family. They didn't do it for nothing. So I'm sorry, I just don't buy it anymore. Uh, that this guy uh, wouldn't be influenced by that, or his family. I don't even know if he knows where he is. Uh, the re- Look, let's face it. What's the reason they don't put him in the situation room? That would look good if they did. Right. Because he can't spend four or five hours, even with his own people, because some of them will walk out and say, oh, my God, this guy can't keep his thoughts straight. And, and just so people understand, you're not being funny. You, you literally say, this guy is not funny. there. We don't have a leader. You talked about my podcast. 
Go back to last year and listen to the two doctors that I put on and let them explain to you from the DSM-5. If you don't realize what he's got, you've never been in a nursing home. I mean, you got to be an idiot not to realize what he has. He gets lost in the middle of a sentence. He turns around and doesn't know where he is. He gets his sister confused with his wife. He thinks he's been in the Senate 120 years, doesn't even realize he said it. He thinks Roosevelt was on television. I mean, well, any, have to, any more? This guy is going to run a massive crisis? He may, do, he may do that when he's briefing the American people. That's why his handlers don't put him out there. I, I want to go to. He's not in the situation room. Uh, I know that you, you don't have a ton of time today and you squeeze me in and I appreciate it. Let me just ask you one last thing. And by the way, we had Ronnie Jackson on recently, who is President Obama and President Trump's doctor. He said, without a doubt, we have to look at dementia with this guy. Um, but, but when it comes to, to what you said about leadership, there is no leadership there. And, and and what we have is people that are making decisions that don't that don't benefit America whatsoever. Uh, Rudy, I, we know that it's not him. Let's say it's Obama running it, or maybe it's Jill Biden, or maybe it's Susan Rice or Valerie Jarrett, whoever the hell's pulling the strings on this puppet. What is their goal? Why don't they well, want America to be first? Why, of, what what do they want? Of these decisions go in favor of China and Russia. And uh, I I uh, was shocked at what I found when I started going through that hard drive that they've censored about how deep the infiltration by China is and how much money China has given to American corporations, American politicians. You know, that's uh, China is the one that had the spy with uh, with, with uh, the senator from California. Right. It's the one who had uh, the girlfriend with, with uh, Sewell. And I mean, they've I mean, they've been deeply embedded here. And the, and the Bidens, they own lock, stock and barrel. I mean, if Biden weren't president, he'd be operating on a $30 million a year contract with the Chinese communist spy master. Right now, I have the contract in my house. Wow. Nobody wants to put it out. And, and, and by the way, it's not just out. politicians. They own big sports, the NBA. They, they oh, own God, big yeah. academia with, their, with their, uh, um, their institutes that are the Confucius Institutes that were in a lot of higher learning places. And as you said, they're embedded in politics. So this is about about big money for people. It's not about them hating America. It's just about them saying, line greed. my pockets. It's greed. It's about massive greed, which is <laughs> a lot of the crimes I prosecuted were about massive greed. Greed can take over your soul. It can take over your patriotism. It can make you turn on your family. It, uh, it can do all kinds of things, particularly when you get into this, you just never have enough. I mean, the Bidens already have stolen about 30 or 40 million. So why do they keep him there? His wife has to know what an embarrassment he is. His wife and his kid, if they loved him, would take him out of that. Except, how is Hunter Biden going to get 500 grand for his paintings if daddy isn't in the White House? I wouldn't give $5. They're going to lose their <laughs> big flow of money. Have you seen those paintings? I wouldn't give $5. It is but they're our, a crooked family. Of course no, they are. And you American outlined it on my people, show a long time ago. You outlined the entire crime family I setup. I outlined it a year and a half ago. Right. And if, the, my my uh, thanks for that is to be suspended from the bar it's investigated nuts. for two and a half years, have my home uh, and my law office raided. And you know what? I'm proud that I did it. I'm going to turn out to be right. He's proven oh, me right every are. day. He is. And it's uh, Rudy Giuliani, Rudy's Common Sense. Talked to Franzese a little while ago. He says hello and thank you for taking part. Well, this big historic sit down with Sammy and, and Michael Franzese, Sammy Gravano, Michael Franzese, and you um, uh, being a part of that, that really, the thing is going to be amazing. And I can't wait to talk to you more about that as well. well um, but you talked about greed. You talked about greed. I mean, that. That whole that whole series is going to be, really show the greed that the mob had that you had to confront and you took down. It's amazing. Yeah, I mean, but in, in many ways, you could find, I don't want to say it, but these people like Biden and Clinton, they don't have any excuse for this. They have no excuse for selling out their country. Biden's been selling out his oath of office from the day he became a senator. Wow. When Strong brother words. James was getting lo a little money for being a crooked lobbyist, and then it morphed into... Imagine taking your son who is inclined to being an addict and putting him in contact with the worst criminals in the world for 30 years. He doesn't care. I mean, one hell of an awful father. He didn't care. Things. And yeah. what, I, what I like about it, Rudy, is every time you come on my show and you say these things, people start attacking you and attacking me. But you can well, back, you can back me, every so. word up. You can back everything up that you say. And I love that about you. Well, it's all in the hard drive. I mean, I, I put it out. Go on my podcast. And you'll find it all in black and white. Rudy's commonsense.com. That's where you find that. Rudy, let's do this again very soon before 9 11 if we can. 
A couple of times if you want. All right, brother. I appreciate you. Have a great day. It's Rudy Giuliani, America's Mayor. Go right now, Rudy's Common Sense.com. We're back after this.